service. Shalom. Praise the Lord. Wow. We thank God for this day. It's another day the Lord has made. Yes, we are still looking at God's masterpiece. Maybe I can concentrate on the masterpiece. The plans, we are talking about God's plan, His masterpiece. Uh, yesterday I explained how a spiritual man is superior to a physical man. I think one thing that has always been forgotten let me read a verse and then I also explain something. That's chapter 5 of 2 Corinthians. Chapter 5. 2 Corinthians. <coughs> the Bible says, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God a house not made with hands and tunnel in the heavens. It says, if our earthly house of this tabernacle is dissolved, it says we have a building of God, a house not made with hands and tunnel in the heavens. For we in this, for in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so, be that being clothed with, we shall not be found naked. Verse 4 says, For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened not for that we would be unclothed but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life Paul's speaking here about our physical body when he's talking about our house our earthly house of this tabernacle it is our earthly house. Uh, what I am seeing when you look at me is not you. What I am seeing, you who is seated before me, is the house that you live in. This is, the physical body is your house. Sorry, wewe ni roho, unaishi ndani ya mwili. Uh, Paul is saying that this, this body limits us a lot. Just we even groan. When Jesus was walking on earth, he could only be in one place at a time. He, when he was fixed in a, in a, in a, in a human physical body, he couldn't fly just to use his, his, his legs. Ah. Uh, until he put on a glorified body. The glorified body. The glorified body was given when he came out of grave. That body was not just like the, the body he had before. The house is closed. The doors, windows, and just comes in. <coughs> That's called a glorified body. That's the body that will be given during the time of rapture. Now the body he had before that was not that body. The body when he can just, you know, he just takes off. He just ascends as they are looking at him. Which kind of body is that? You know, he's just moving. Just, people are just watching until he disappeared into the skies. Chapter 1 of Luke verse, uh, Acts verse 9 and 10. You see what I'm talking about. He just left. Paul is saying, this body limits us. And it's true. 
this body should not be functioning the way it is functioning today. It's only functioning the way it is functioning today because of sin. God has never intended that you're going to use your physical eyes to operate on earth. Mungu Mungu hajaipanga utatumia macho yako ya kimwili. Unapoendelea na shughuli zako za maisha. He never. When Adam ate forbidden fruit, that is when these physical eyes were opened. And that tells you that the spiritual eyes were closed. So man began thinking that all there is that all that he sees. And that's not true. All there is is not all that you see physically. In other words, if you could have if we could have been given opportunity and that is the opportunity we are given when we get born again. That our spiritual eyes will be open to see this other Abraham Adam was created to function. You see the prophets see. Prophets. I'm talking about genuine ones. I'm searching John son Suleiman. The other day when he came to Nairobi. Now when John son Suleiman looks at you, he sees everything about he sees all your, your all your your siblings. <laughs> he sees where you are born. Some of them even see what is in your bedroom. There are a number of to tomatoes that are remained in the kitchen. When they, when they look at you like this, they even see the, the primary you went to, they see the uniform, even the name. Might we need to bring a prophet of that kind, one, this day. Who just, and then he begins naming all your siblings one by one. That's what I saw him do. But the other one is Nairobi. Come from Nyanza, and the lady said, "Yes, I come from Nyanza." He just, he even, he's even giving the very village where she, as a prophet. In fact, we were created to live like that, to see. And he says, "We, I see in the spiritual realm. This is what I see." This way, the lady that he was talking to was not married, and all the sisters were not married. And this, there's a problem in your house that all of you, he sees. He can't see with this physical eye. He sees with a spiritual eye. When they enter this town, they can always disturbing people. The prophets. That's a different, uh, that's one of the fivefold ministries. All of us who are designed, man was created to, to be like that. But the sin that came in closed the eyes of a man. So that even when you enter this town, for you, you are just looking around. You think all that is, all that you see. <laughs> There's more than you see in this town. There's more than. And you can't experience God depending on your physical eyes. You can't have what God has for you. Just thinking only this small eye. In fact, your eyes can see more. That's why Paul prays in First Ephesians, in the book of Ephesians, chapter number 1, verse 15, 16, 17. It says, from the time you got born again, I cease not to pray for you so that the eyes of your understanding will be flooded with light. Hmm? Ili macho yenu ya funguke. Ndiyo mwanze kuona ni yapi ambayo mungu wanayo kwa jili yenu. It's so that you see the riches that he deposited for them that have come into me. It's just the riches. The power that was released because of you. That's the prayer he makes. Says, there is a power that was sent or that was given to us when Jesus left the grave and that power he gave it to us. Just if you understand that, you're going not to function like a mere man. You cannot be like an ordinary person. Any person, I said yesterday, you know, you are bigger than Marsabi Town. Now this one. 
The only problem is now the, the body you are contained in is what makes you feel like you're too small. What do you think David could face? A man. I've explained to you what sons of Anak look like. Those ones that were born of demons. Sons of Anak are offspring of human beings. Woman, a woman, and a demon. Those are not just uh, from uh, another man. There's no man that look like sons of Anak that when God created. No. Chapter number 6 of Genesis, you can find something about it. The sons of... The Bible there says the sons of God got interested in the, uh, the daughters of men. In Job the same way. Sons of God never appeared. Which are these sons of God? They produced... These huge beings. I said your body is equal to their hand. Your body. One hand. The other hand is like. Then the head is how much? Uh, we talked about 20 feet tall. Double this size. This, uh, this door is 6 feet. And the guy is double this size tall. The head is something else. The hand is. How can you small, a 17-year boy, stand before this kind of mountain of a man <laughs> and you want to kill him? How, how does it? Unless something must have happened to him from above. When the oil was poured on his head, his eyes opened. And when he looked at Goliath, he saw just a bulk of flesh with nothing in it, no power. He says, how can this uncircumcised Philistine insult <laughs> you know <laughs> is he stopped seeing with this eye when that guy stood there aliacha kuona nei macho ya ya kawaida philistines were standing on another mountain the other side the israelites were standing on the mountain on this side there was kiwanja hapo katikati the guy is standing the other side and is screaming and saying, if you are you are really men, come and face me. Said somebody. In fact, the Bible says he stood there 40 days in insulting. And then one of these days, uh, Dan, uh, the man is called David, came out. And when David came out and he saw that guy, David was so surprised at how huge the guy is. He's surprised at how defeated the man is because he has no, when he says uncircumcised Philistine, he knew that this guy has no covenant with God. All children of Abraham are to be circumcised. And anybody not circumcised is as good as powerless, useless. So when this man is, came out, the first question he asked is, what is given to the person who will kill this man? Kijana wa miaka kumi na saba. Hata wazee wanatoroka kama saulo. Mfali na saulo. Na ya nakuja na angalia. Anauliza, eh, hey, umu ya natukana watu hivi. Kami nikiuwa ye, eh, nitapewa nini. I think we need to search kind of people. <laughs> God, is, God is looking for people can terrorize. Them that are terrorizing the people of God. He is looking for such men. Spiritual eyes. I mean spiritual eyes. When I want to take town, for example, you can look at the neighbors. You know, when I talk about the neighbor, you understand. And they have deep, big house of worship. They have. It's not about what you are seeing physically. When Pastor Lai entered Mombasa, this thing is everywhere. This thing you call mosque, and the population is ninety-nine percent. When he entered there, they told him you cannot raise a church beyond 200 members. That was 1983. I don't know where you are. He took over, cha over cha a church from somebody who was leading. He's only 60 members. And they said, You cannot. And the guy looked around and says, I can. And he's a man who stays in prayer. He says, I can. 
When you stay in prayer, the other eye will open. <laughs> if you don't pray, you only see with this. Now they said you cannot raise a house, a church, more than 300. Now he has built a structure that sits 30,000 people in one meeting. Today, believers are all over the area. In 40 years, they are saturated church every corner of that land. They were targeting to have at least 50 church, 50 churches in those areas. In the, I think in, the, in less than five years. Now I hope I hope that have, has happened. I've seen the few, the last two years, more than 10 churches have, be, have been. They began in just in, within Mombasa. Everywhere they saturate church. But when he entered there, they're buying land. There's a, in Likoni, he just looked at a band and said, this is becoming a church. And he left. <laughs> a bar. That is not a, a physical eye. And right now the church is there. That thing is a church now. You can turn anything into what you want. <laughs> if you know the power that you have. I'm talking about God's masterpiece. If you are a type designed by God, you do things that cannot fit in the mind of a man. I'm saying you do things that cannot fit in the mind of a man. You can't be thinking. You see, that's why it is surprises God that when you are thinking about a small sickness on your body, when if you pray for thousands, all of them get healed. And you are struggling with this small malaria. Typhoid. <laughs> for that small cancer. Small. I'm saying small. Cancer is very small. That small HIV. Or that small. Whatever they have called the terminal. The problem is people who don't know God has defined your language. And you're losing, using their words to try to talk about life. Whenever God looks at anybody he raises up, he sees powerful things that can come out of that man. Them that know their God. The Bible says they shall be strong. Not weak. Not a type that is sickly. Huh? When you know him, you become strong. You need the strength to do big things. Weak people do not do any, anything. They sit there and they cry about every problem. <laughs> and the strength we are talking about is the strength of God. I can do all things through Christ who infuses inner energy in me. <laughs> Nobody says this. this. I can do. This one that infuses. There's somebody who infuses energy within me. The kind of energy that cannot be discouraged by any circumstances of life. The kind of energy that cannot be suppressed by even, I don't know. They try to tell Daniel, we are going to throw him in the den of lion. Was he even disturbed? Yes, it is okay. Daniel is bigger than this physical guy that is just walking in there. When Daniel came in, Somebody said, the lions said, let's create a very warm environment for this man. Wata kuja lale katikati yetu wapa. Na moja kakua pilo. Wengine wata wakam surround him. The guy enjoyed himself. And the king comes in the morning. Daniel, I used to, the king did sleep the whole night. In fact, the Bible says he prayed for Daniel the whole night. <laughs> Daniel slept. What kind of man is Daniel? What kind of man? Your true identity and potential can only be released when you know God. And you will not struggle with anything small around you. That's why Jesus wonders. Unaglia kwa sababu ya chakula enye unataka kukula. Na unguo unavaa. Na maji ya kunywa. And I say, it is a disgrace. It is a disgrace. <laughs> you are crying because of the stomach. 
this small thing. When you buy a motorbike, you know that you have ability to fuel it. When you buy a, a vehicle, you have a, you know you have ability to fuel it. Sibio. no prado. It cannot be compared to this small vehicle here that drinks something small. If you have that big machine, it means you have big money. And the money you're buying that vehicle with is, and it, then you compare with the one that the, the fuel is just some some few percentage, five percent or one percent, maybe even less than one percent. If you compare the price of the vehicle, if you can buy a vehicle at two million, unaza kosa elfu bini, amal futano, kandani. Pikipiki ni 150. Kiwa na so moja ni kama. This is your body is a vehicle that you used to move around. Sasa hiki kitu kidogo hapa. Uko na 150k ya kununua motorbike lakini una 10 bob. Una 100 bob ya kuweka fuel. Sinaka hivi. God is wondering, how is it that <laughs> this big you hata nguo ya kuvaa unashangaa nayo? Servicing a, a vehicle is not that hard if you have bought it with a lot of money. Servicing motorbike is roughly if it costs so much, might be a thousand. Fanya kila kitu. At most per month. I don't think that is a lot of money. Unaze nwa, ushindo kununa taya ya motorbike. <laughs> this body you can easily take care of it if you understand who you are the problem is you are seeing this defeated guy <laughs> you are seeing this broke this, this is the problem what we are looking at is different when you look at yourself from God's point of view in fact, you begin sponsoring every rich person in this town. If you think somebody is rich and is not born again, that guy is a poor guy. He is having your money. Jesus says, occupy until I come. If you get into a city like this, tomorrow I will show you what Philip did. Philip is just a deacon. No, a deacon. An usher in a church. He entered Samaria. He messed it up. We're going to see. When he entered that city, he's like, ah. he's not a small. Anybody born again, having the back of the of angels around you, angels are only waiting to hear you speak what God said about you, and they will fly in action, and they will do for you whatever. If it is a prayer like we are making here, and you are. You're speaking the scriptures. This is what the Bible says about me. This is what the Bible says about me. This is everything will be worked out for whatever you're saying to come to pass. Like the path of the just is as a shining light that shines more and more. That means my future is so bright that I am going to shine brighter and brighter every day. Every day when I wake up, I am bright. I'm brighter than yesterday. When I come next, every morning has to be a day. I've been speaking like this from the day I put up the structure of this church. When we put up here, there was nothing like this. The first time I began the church, I, I, visual, I visualized everything that has to be in this house. Even in this thing I said, Tulikapa miaka moja na kitu bila hii. Because mini metaka hii. Kitu natengeneza baungini ndogo wapa. I studied Adam. I was preaching without this. I was seeing myself speaking and people watching live. Before the, the thing began. The thing has already been cooked in my head. I remember one July last it was before conference last year, July. I wanted to fix this floor. Because it was not like this. I wanted to put up this thing that you see here. 
and we are printing two books. One by Ben Isaac, the other one. And I, I calculated I needed 750k. And that money is needed in one? One month. Do I have leaders here? Not even a single of them. I told them in the next one month, we are fixing the floor, doing this. Buying the books, paying ticket for this guy who is flying from. And then I said, we need what, 50, 750k. But it is going to happen. Was there that money in the chart in the account? No. Exactly after one month, all these things are happened. <coughs> exactly after one. And the leader says, we, can, we just surrender. Exactly after one month. Is the money you have the only one that is in your pocket? Or the one in your account? Jesus was asked for tax. Do you pay tax? Just look at that guy. He says, your people are confused. You don't, should not be demanding tax from me, but I will give. And then he told Peter, go to where? The sea. Open up the first fish that you catch get money inside there, pay for me and yourself. Did he say that? May God give you that supernatural ability. So that you're not functioning as a, a physical being. You know physical being? The only thing I have is what I see. This kind of reasoning. The only thing I have is what is in my pocket. So what about if your pocket is empty? <laughs> I said, because I don't have a job. I, I, I cannot get money. Who told you? Was Jesus working for somebody? When he sent them, all of them, he declared them, he, he they all decided to resign from their jobs. Did you know that? All the disciples? All! Did they have money when they come to begin ministry? When we enter a city like this, the money in this city is ours. So we seem to stand up and do something, and the money comes. We have a mindset that whatever is of God is ours. Whatever is of God is if he's the creator of heaven and earth, and he's the one that created us, anywhere on the face of the earth, if you go, you can have whatever you want because your father is the one that made it. The problem is we sit there thinking we have nothing. We don't believe that there's something about us. I'm saying there's something about us. Don't limit yourself to this physical body. In a tank here, your motorbike, your quick one, my foot and done. I'm a Gary. And you're not a jika quick half and done in Kidogo San. To dress yourself is just simple. You can even put on the, the best kind of dress you want to put on. The, the problem is you're thinking different. If you go and begin some work, you need to begin. Thinking about thousands who are hearing you or are benefiting from you. Why can't you become more than Bill Gates? Hmm? I budget at least 5,000 to give every week here. When I stand here. At least 5K. 400 times 7 is 2800 and every school I go and teach I also live there 200 every school currently I'm doing for others are being taken care of somewhere I make sure that is four four times 400 plus times four is 800 plus 2800 
that money has to I have to give that money every week at least that money every time I stand here or I stand anywhere to preach and I don't ask where does it come from every time I stand I have it amen do I have salary? It's not about whether you have salary. You have a God in heaven. I've seen big preachers. They are big givers than their members in their church. Like Robert Kayanja, Pastor Chris, Oyedepo, these big preachers. I don't, I don't, uh, <laughs> I, don't I don't associate with myself with these small preachers. We're always telling people to give, but they don't give. And I know how to access it. It's just a matter of just giving. So in a month, at least, I should give over 15000 in this church, myself. That is money for giving only. And I don't think salary. I even said to the church, I don't need salary from this church. I don't need I'll give it here. There's something that has dawned on me about who I am. Not just so we are not just this and somebody should not try to uh, boast and make me feel like I am nothing by simply when they think that they have a vehicle. They don't know I am about to fly. You know I, I will go everywhere that no, one, one advantage of men of God God can give opportunity that others cannot have going to fly across the universe and do big things. That one is in my head. I know. I'll be flying <laughs> everywhere, doing some work. So I cannot be uh, reduced by a small guy who simply has something small in this town. One of my business is all over the world. It's, there's an identity that has been revealed to me when I was to do this work. And I read the Bible, I see. You see, Big things done by small, the people you think are small, they only discovered who they are. You can't discover your identity and be small. It's not possible. The next 20 minutes, we can pray. Just pray yourself into greatness. Pray yourself into abundance. Pray yourself. Just stand up and just, just pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. In the precious name of Jesus. Rosso Toro Boglere Bosiribi Gladia. Mantana made go sakla brade kladia. Thank you, Father. Kashata. Mabrosiri gladia.